So I've just been asked to look at um, some quilter funds. So I thought I would pick a few. I'll go through a few. Uh, seven Investment Managers has come up, or 7IM has come up a fair time. So I thought I'd pick the one which is most likely to have generated the best returns. Adventurous account. Let's have a look at their discrete performance. How have they done? Well, okay, negative in 2019 to 2020, 13% in 2022. Okay, not too bad. 5% the year after, 2.5% the year after that, and so far this year. Well, we can ignore this year because it's under 1%. It's not fair. That is not going to set the world on fire. So why, why the poor performance? And I'm going to compare it to what you could have had. And you might say, well, that's really unfair because maybe they're not investing in the stuff that's done well. Like, like I say, the S&P 500 was up 25% alone last year when they were up 2.4. So they're getting 10% of the S&P 500. And you might say, well, they've got nothing to do with the S&P 500. Why would you compare it with the 500 largest American companies? Maybe they like losing money and don't like um, having gains. Maybe that's the case. Maybe you're right. Let's look at their top holdings. Ah, I see. So they're a fund that puts it in other funds. So they charge a fee to put it into other funds, which also charge a fee to buy then individual stocks. And what have they put most of the money in? Ah, oh, that explains it. The UK 100 index, so the FTSE 100. The FTSE 100 is up 7% since 1999 to 2024. In total, not annually, in total. So these guys have decided to ignore history and thought suddenly, let's put 10% of our money in an index which is pretty much every single year guaranteed to stink for the last 25 years. Well, that's great because past performance is no guarantee of the future, but it better be no bloody guide either if these guys are to go by. Then they've gone with Amundi Japan. Japan's not been too bad, actually. Climate net zero ambition. Now, let me tell you something. When it comes to my pension, I better have a bloody good return first. And the next thing I'm worried about is the climate, the planet, and everything else. I'll make donations to save the earth and all the rest of it. But for my pension, just get me a bloody good return, will you? And let's not forget the hypocrisy of putting it into the FTSE 100, which is oil rich, and then shoving some of it into net zero. Oh, okay. That's how karma works. Emerging markets, shove it into a bit of that. Europe, shove it into a bit of that. So basically, there is no theme here. Shove it into everything. Oh, and a bit more FTSE 100 because you didn't have enough before. You put nine in there, stick another six in. Seriously. So where would you put the S&P 500? You know, the index which went up 25%. Let's put that way down below the FTSE 100. Let's put it at six. So basically, this is the financially ignorant or the financially incompetent or the financially naive. I'm not sure which it is. Um, I'm just going to say Muppets. Am I angry? Yeah, I'm bloody angry that this is what they're doing for people. I'm bloody angry because that's people's pensions. That's people's pensions. See how much money they've got in it. Oh, 280 million. Do you know what that is in fees? Let's work it out. 280 million, fees 1.6. Even just call it 1% fees, okay? Because there might be all sorts of little... So 280 million, they get 2.8 million. And they'll have one fund manager almost certainly and that fund manager will probably be fairly fresh out of university so they don't have to pay him too much and most of it will be automated click a button and it just sends it into those little funds 2.8 million pounds a year in fees do you think they're going to tell you hey don't go for this 2.8 million a year lovely jubbly join the city if you can't beat them just get corrupt. Okay, sorry, that's all I've got to say on that one.